In the dressing room. In the dressing room. <laughs> but some of you have heard some of our previous speeches. <laughs> well, you, you may be familiar with the subject matter. I'll just let you that. Pat, would you share your, your comments with regard to customer service? It was two days before Christmas, and I was doing some last-minute Christmas shopping at Foley's. And I, I went to get a certain th item that was advertised in the paper, and they didn't have it at their store. So the clerk called all the other stores to see if they had it, to spare me a trip of going there and finding out they didn't have it either. And I thought that was pretty special. It was pretty special. All right. Well, Pat's evaluator, please share her objectives. Thank you. Good morning, Coastmasters and guests. Pat will be speaking from the Humorously Speaking Manual, the first speech called Warming Up Your Audience. The objectives are to prepare a speech that opens with a humorous story, personalize the story, deliver the story smoothly and effectively. The title of Pat's speech is called The Final Score. The Final Score. Please help me welcome Pat Patterson. Mike had a job that was necessary, but wasn't all that glamorous. It was his job to go behind the circus elephants in the center ring and shovel the dung out of the way. And one particular night was really bad. And he went, he went to the cafeteria and he complained to his friend, Jim, I hate this job. Look at me. Oh, I spent, my arms are tired. I spent the night not only dodging, but cleaning up this stuff and carting it away. I'm through, I hate it. And his friend Jim said, well, you know, you have other skills. You could quit and get another job, you know. And Mike said, what? Quit? And leave, and Leave show business and the roar of the crowd? <laughs> <laughs> Too many of us work jobs that we don't like. The, uh, it, it, the average person, the average American, has three credit cards and a $7,000 in debt. Now that translates to making yourself not available to change other jobs because you've got the debt. It is such a common thing. There is even a bumper sticker that says, I owe, I owe. So it's off to work I go. <laughs> now, how many of you have seen one that says, I love my work, I love my job, I'm self-employed? Or how about, I love my job, I love Mondays as much as I love Saturdays and Sundays. We don't see those, do we? So, I invite you. I have had it both ways. I have worked in office jobs where I felt that when I went to work, I was chaining myself to a desk and imprisoning myself doing something that I found unfulfilling and wasting my life. Now, I don't know about any of you, do you like the work you're doing? Do you like the job you have? Do you find it fulfilling? Do you find that it provides you with what you need to make you feel psychologically great, as well as providing that pay paycheck? I want to tell you, life is too short and too precious to waste. It is all you've got. We seem to go through life and we worry about all the things that aren't important. And we forget the things that are, how we feel inside, how do we face the world. Is our life meaningful? Do we have good relationships? Too often people say, they, we compare ourselves to animals and people say, oh, I worked like a horse. I came home dog tired. <laughs> and not only that, I've got a boss that is stubborn as a mule, bullheaded, and mean as a snake, and we feel forced to stay. But there's one problem with staying, and that is A 
It's hard to hide. <laughs> when you're miserable on the inside, it has a way of coming through on the outside. Do you find that you are satisfied with your life? I would like to propose to you that life is a play that you are writing. Every day, you create a script for yourself. You have a cast of characters. You have those that you interact with at home. You have a role that you play. You have another role that you play at work with another cast of characters and different ways that you act. Now, I want you to take some time and think about your life. Do you feel that, you are, that what you are doing is what you want to do? Do you feel that, or do you feel that life is passing you by? Well, as in this thing, Garfield, I feel that life is passing us by. And there goes the little guy with the happy face. And he comes around again, and Garfield says, passing us by, heck, it's Laptus. <laughs> <laughs> now, I want you to take some time now. And I want everybody to close their eyes and keep them closed. And I want to ask you something. Realize, look at your life, and ask yourself what role you have assigned yourself. Are you the hero or the heroine of your life story? Or are you playing a secondary character or one in the background, a stereotype? who does only what is expected of him or her, and then is gone and just kind of fades away. Now, if you aren't satisfied with this role that you are playing, are you exploring other possibilities? Are you testing them out to find something more rewarding? Do you want the character that you are acting out daily? Do you want that person to be adventurous? Or somebody who is stable and stays at home within your community? Now look again at your role that you've assigned yourself and realize that if you don't like the role that you've gone, that you were free to change it. What is it you'd rather do? Because all of us, it's also a game of chance. Not only do we have what we are looking for, what we are striving for, but sometimes life comes up like a football game and hits us from behind. And when that happens, and the final score is up on the scoreboard, are you going to be happy with it? Now open your eyes. It's not too late to go for what you want. Just define it, work toward it, and go. Toastmaster.